Hey, my name is Mark Romanek, and you're watching Fishing 401. Stick around, because this week's program is something very special. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag just yet. Well, during our Walleyes for Wounded Heroes episode, I actually had an opportunity to fish with an American hero. His name was Henry James, and he was in Iraq and blown up a number of different times. The man had multiple different uh, deployments, fortunately survived all of it, came back to America, and I had the great honor of actually having him in my boat with me and taking him walleye fishing. We had an absolutely awesome time. We're going to run tattle flags today, and uh, the reason we're going to run tattle flags is these spring-loaded flag systems because we're going to be running crawlers. And uh, what's going to happen is these fish will swim up behind, and they'll grab a hold of that crawler. And without this tattle flag, we won't necessarily know when we're getting bites. When we rig them up, you'll get a better idea. But the last time I had used these boards, I had the tattle flags tightened down because we were salmon fishing. So didn't need a tattle flag to tell me when I got a salmon bite. You do to tell you when you got a walleye bite. So today we're fishing crawler harnesses. And crawler harness is probably the one technique that's most popular for walleye fishermen. We're using big blades because these are bigger average size fish out here in real bright colors. On Lake Erie, a lot of pinks and purples. Chartreuses are really popular colors out here. So this is a number six Colorado blade that we have on. We also have a quick change clevis on it so we can change the blade colors out as the day goes on. We might have a harness that works a little bit better than the next one, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to change colors. Well, we're just getting started this morning, and you'll notice on our plotter there's a lot of zigzag patterning up and down, up and down. Basically what that is is that we're looking for fish. Before we even put our lines in the water, we're going to go ahead and run a grid pattern out here in open water, just searching for fish. And when we start marking them on the graph and we start seeing consistent numbers of fish, then we're going to go ahead and set up and make our first pass. So we're just starting with our first pass, and we're going to try and go right back down the plot trail uh, where we just got done marking fish. Hopefully that's going to get us on the fish quick this morning. Oh, really? Cool. Yeah, you get the honors to start us off here. You got that, Henry. Look at there, and I was just wondering about that. I was just curious to know if it's going to be a sheephead or white bass or a walleye this morning. You know, I always thought white bass from around here was something good to eat. They tell me different now. Swing it right over here by me, Henry. There we go. She's all yours. Okay. That's a walleye. Right flavor. I guess little is the emphasis here. Look at that. <laughs> I don't think he's going to stretch. <laughs> Henry, I don't know, man. Don't know. We got we got some measuring board, but I don't know. That one's going to be definitely close to the bump. He probably is 15 inches, but... Go out there and make it a little bigger. <laughs> Let's come up. We'll catch him next year, my friend. Henry, I think we are hooked up again, my friend. 
three or how many more? Oh, yeah. oh, it feels a little bigger. Uh, might be. I'm. Uh, feel, uh, yeah. I'm going to be optimistic at this point. Yes, it's a bigger one. Here he comes. He want to fight. There you go. He like to fight, and I feel it. He's pulling his rod down. You got a little bend going on there this yes, time, I so do. whatever we got here is definitely giving you a little bit more excitement. Uh -huh. All right. It's all yours, Henry. Thank you, Jake. Oh, ho, ho, ho. yeah. Look at that. <laughs> that was a deeper fish there. That was 70 back. I haven't seen him yet. There's the tadpole. Oh, you got a beautiful fish here. A little closer, and we'll get this buddy in the scoop here. That's a good start right there. Henry, that's exactly what we're looking for. This is what we're talking about. This is what you call skillet size. That's pretty typical for what we expect to catch at Lake Erie this time of year. You know, Lake Erie is world famous for producing big walleye, but not so much at the last week of June. So, uh, I mean, honestly, if we could get a few more of these, I'd be pretty happy. Additional considerations provided by Lowrance Electronics. Find, navigate, dominate. Additional considerations provided by Argo Amphibious ATV. Extreme Terrain Vehicle Solutions. We've been fishing today in an outreach program called Walleyes for Wounded Heroes. And actually what we have out here is 80 different veterans, police officers, and first responders. And all these guys have one thing in common. In fact, I should say all these guys and gals because there's both men and women involved in this program. They all have one thing in common. They've all been wounded or injured in the line of duty. Our responsibility here today is to get these guys out, give them a, show them a good time on the water, and help the healing process. Uh, 24 years in Army National Guard. And... Uh, a lot of people think, you know, weekend warrior. It wasn't the case for me. This last time was, uh, I had a tour in Iraq from uh, 2004 to 2006. And uh, on May 21st of 2005, it was a Saturday morning, and it was a day I will never forget. It was the day that I was uh, injured, well, blown up in Iraq. I was a gunner in Humvee. We were just coming back from a convoy mission, escorting convoys. And it was on a Saturday morning. Well, Saturday mornings is uh, what they call flea market days. And uh, there's a big crowd always in these flea markets. Come through on the highway by one, and I noticed this car on the side of the road. It looked kind of suspicious looking the way he was sitting, where he was sitting at on the road. And uh, Ruth's coming up on it, and I was about ready to, to holler at my driver to tell him to watch it. And the Hummer came up on it, and they detonated the car just as we come by. I say uh, our Hummer was no more than uh, 40 feet away from it, 30 to 40 feet away from it. It. Uh, the concussion of the bomb was so much that it luckily blew me down into the hatch. The whole right side of my face, all the bones were broken. Uh, the right shoulder was injured. And I uh, didn't know it at the time, but I had a piece of shrapnel on my spine. And they gave me this shrapnel when I was in the hospital when they was taking the shrapnel out of my face. And they found this on my spine. Doctors couldn't figure out why I didn't take my head off. He said, I've seen less than that go through a person and took the, killed him. And I, apparently somebody was watching over at the time when it, when it happened. I had this one uh, general was there, and he come up to me and just looked at me and said a little prayer for me. That was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. You know, I have an officer, a uh, high ranking like that, and say a prayer for you. And uh, he said, soldier, I hope you get well. And, and I was able to talk enough words. I said, sir, I'll be back. <laughs> and I know it's kind of corny like the movies, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger, but I meant it. And sure enough, I was able to heal up enough, not all the way, but enough uh, uh, in the process to get me back over there. And I was the only one from uh, the Riyadh companies that we had over there 
I was the only one that was able to come back and go back into service and go back to gunning again. Wounded Warriors to me has been a, a, a blessed situation I've ever been in, you know, to, to see the other soldiers. It's different. You cannot talk to civilian life on civilian side on, on the situation that you went through and what went through your mind and everything. With, wounded, with the Wounded Warriors, you had different ones that went through the same situation where you got blown up or shot at, went through surgeries and healing. And that's the main thing. We talked about our healing and our, and our therapy and things like that. And we help one another with benefits and, and help us each other. There's benefits out there for us that a lot of us didn't know about. So it's like a healing process. It's a brotherly and sisterly group together, you know, to help. You know, it's just something I can give back because uh, I've been given the opportunity with my sponsors in fishing and uh, I just come up and help out and take some guys out fishing, have a good time and uh, show them a good time and, you know, it's, it's just something I can do to give back to uh, what they do gave up for our country. You know, I think it's a great cause and uh, I think that, you know, what these guys are doing for the veterans and that these guys fought for our country obviously and I think that's like the most best thing in the world so I think that it's a, a really good opportunity to take these guys out that uh, work so hard to give us our freedom. Well I came up with a bait. Uh, we actually paint them on reef runners which are donated by Scott Stecker from Reef Runner um, and I, what I've done is I've came up with a bait that uh, has patriotic stars and the colors red, white and blue. When I first heard about Walleyes for Wounded Heroes the information was brought to me by two gentlemen that I know and trust. Uh, Joe Steltzer and Ferd Lohman. These two guys have been involved in Walleyes for Wounded Heroes for some years um, and they see great value in it. When they brought it to me and told me their stories and what was going on, it moved me emotionally and I knew immediately we were going to get involved. But I wouldn't have known about it if it wasn't for those guys bringing the information to us. It really was our honor to get involved and showcase these American heroes and the sacrifices that they've made. Additional considerations provided by Bait Rigs Tackle and by Fishhawk Electronics. Considerations provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. Oh, it's a white bass, it's a big one. It's <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, hopefully that's not what it is here. Let's see him here. He's staying down good. Oh, that's a nice walleye. There we go. You got the touch today. Henry, you got the touch. Check it out. That is a beautiful, beautiful fish. Yes, they're really having a good day so far. You're halfway to a limit, my friend. Halfway. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. man. That's a good start. That's a good start. Well, something kind of interesting is happening here, and it happens a lot on Lake Erie. We're running tattle flags that we had talked about. They're spring-loaded flags, and you can see the when I pull on the line, in other words, when the fish is hooked, the flag goes down and pops up. What I noticed is the flag did this. It just boink, and then right back up again. Well. That could mean a couple of things. It could mean that a walleye struck at it but didn't get hooked. But because we've been catching a lot of less desirable fish like white perch and, and white bass, I kind of figured what was really going on is that I just got my bait stolen by a white perch. So when I saw that flag go down and go back up like that immediately, I uh, waited for a couple more seconds, didn't see anything, any activity go on. So then I tripped this board, reeled it in, and sure enough, there was a white perch on it. So without the tattle flag, I had never known that, unless I just happened to be looking at that board at that very instant the fish bit. So the tattle flags allow us to be very efficient. Keep our bait in the water, make sure that we've always got crawlers on all the time. You can't beat it. If you're not fishing tattle flags, you're missing a lot of walleye bites. So in the state of Ohio, you're allowed two lines a person. So what we're doing today is we're fishing six lines. We're fishing our maximum amount of lines that we're allowed to put out. So what we're doing is we're fishing six planer boards and three aside. To do that, you have to be able to stack them out to the side. And there's a couple ways to do that. What we're doing is we're taking our highest line and it's going to be the furthest outside board. And a little bit deeper and then a little bit deeper. That way when you catch a fish on the outside, you can bring it right over top of your inside boards. I like rigging my planer boards a certain way for that. What I do is I take the OR19 release from offshore, and this is the way that they come factory standard now. The OR19 release, it's the orange one, and I put that on the front line right there. And what I'm doing is I put a little twist on the line. Then what I do is I come to the back release, and that's called an OR16, it's got a little pin in it there. That makes sure the board doesn't come off. So now, when this board is out to the side, when I have a fish on, 
All I have to do is kind of set the hook and the line pops through the release and the board swings to the back of the boat. That way I don't have to clear any of those inside boards. It makes for a really slick method stacking multiple boards. Ooh -wee. Oh, I felt a little fight. A little tug of war right here. <laughs> I'm gonna cut in here and get that board off for you in a second here. Okay, Henry's all yours. Come on, pay that. And that one would be at 60 back, so we've got a bite at 60 and one at 70. Let's see what this is. Oh, yeah, baby. That's what we're looking for. Okay. Just raise your rod a little bit. Got him. Nicely done, Henry. Nicely done. Well, it's time. We've got our second nice fish in the box here, and it's time for us to talk a little bit about how we caught it. No surprises. We caught it on a nightcrawler harness, which are really popular here this time of year. But we used a little bit different rig to make it happen. This is a tadpole diver that I have in my hand. It's made by Offshore Tackle. It's the size number one. That's our diver. That's what's taking our rig down to depth. Connected to the back of it, I've got a four-inch big Al fish flash on here and all this does is just rotate in the water it just spins and that's the attractor that's trying to bring the fish into the gear and then at the business end here I got a leader it's long almost six foot long back here because the water's fairly clear terminating to our crawler harness at the end and of course we'll have a night crawler on there as well so this system itself is what's been working really really well for us over the past and we can stagger the depths on these just by simply controlling how much lead length that we're letting out. So, so far so good. It looks like we're on to a, a pretty good bite here this morning. Yes, we are. Additional considerations provided by Mustang Survival and by Motor Guide Electric Motors. Additional considerations provided by Eagle Marine Service and by Ontario's Algoma Country. That real. The Walleye for Wounded Heroes event actually involved uh, between 80 and 90 different American heroes. So in order to get as many of these men and women as possible included in the television segment that we created, we split up our crew. Mary grabbed the camera and she jumped on board with Captain Paul Walker who was kind enough to donate his time to get a lot of these people out. You know, some, a lot of the images you're going to see were the ones that she shot on Paul's boat. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Another thing that is, that thing fought like a champ. Say up here, fish on. You're off in your nap, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> About that time of day. <laughs> nice fish, man. Oh, a little slippery right there, but we got her. We got her. Henry, that's about as perfect as it gets for Lake Erie. That's a good one right there. That's what I call a fish sandwich. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just the right size for eating, I'll tell you what. We've had an awesome day of fishing and it's not over yet. Not over. Very cool. So we're controlling our speed with our electric motor. We have a Motor Guide XI-5 on the bow of the boat. What that's doing is it's not only controlling our speed, but it's also keeping us in a straight course. Right here I have the key fob in my hand and I can control our boat left or right with these arrows that I have right here. Also I can control the speed and as autopilot feature, which is right here. What that does is it just keeps me on a straight compass heading, keeping me straight. I don't have to worry about anyone driving the boat. I can be at the back of the boat setting rods and having a good time. It's an awesome system. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, 
Big old kitty cat. Oh. They got the other line too, so we're uh, bringing in both lines. So that's okay. <laughs> you got a little bit more action on that one. Perfect. Look at that. Line broke right at the yeah, instant you got in that. That couldn't have been any better. You had done that perfect. You know, the line broke right at that instant. <laughs> Not bad. I'll just put this over here for you. You done good. Give him a, this freedom here. Away he goes. Henry, you are the man of the hour right there. Yeah. Put a little That's bit more. a good one. You like that one, huh? Probably the same cap, but you know. <laughs> it might be another cap, but I'm doubting it's the same you one. Think it might so be a buddy? I think well, I think we learned him a good lesson. So nice walleye. Nice Sweet, fish. you did good. You did good. You know what the odds are of that? That is amazing. You have been catching these beautiful fish, one after another today. <laughs> fish. That's what I'm hoping. Oh, we'll take a look here. Oh, uh, this one ain't going in grill. Oh, that's a good fish. That's a beautiful fish. A couple more strings. There he is in the bucket. There you go. That's what we're talking about. That's what Lake Erie's famous for. Look at that. Now well, that's what we're talking about. That's a fish Ohio fishing that's this part of the world. That's a big fish right there, I tell you what. <laughs> what do you think they go for? How many inches? Oh, uh, that's 28, 29 inches in that neighborhood and uh, somewhere around that seven to eight pound range. So not uh, bad, huh? Boy, wait till I take that back and show them. <laughs> hey, Mike, <laughs> that's exactly what we'll do. Hey, my name is Mark Romanek. You've been watching Fishing 401. Hope you tune in same time, same place next week. Wow, what a fish. Closed captioning is provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, your leaders in trolling technology, Yakima Bait, Home of the Rooster Tail, Maxima Fishing Lines, the best line every time, Evinroot Outboards, introducing the E-Tech G2, Starcraft Marine, America's oldest aluminum fishing boat line, Jay's Sporting Goods, trust in the tradition, Cisco Fishing Systems, fish the finest, smooth moves, smooth your ride. Sorry, it's too strong. Put your hand in.